Hello and welcome to this short series of tutorials looking at the card wipe effect. Now the card wipe effect is actually a transition. So if I create a new composition, I'm going to make mine uh, HDTV. I'm going to call this main. And I'm going to create a layer. So layer new solid, command or control Y. And I'm going to make that any colour I want really. So light blue perhaps. And click OK and it's the same size as the composition and I'm going to apply the card wipe effect. If you don't know where it is you can type over in your effects and presets over here card wipe. It is actually a transition however. So it's under the transition effects. And then you can take it and drop it onto there. And it starts off with this semi-completed system. And you'll see up here we've got transition completion 25%. So that's zero and it goes all the way through to 100% and you've probably seen this used in various ways where you've got a crowd of people so you've got a video layer underneath of a crowd of people and then all of a sudden they all seem to appear to turn over cars to show some sort of image and that's what's happened when you've gone through the transition. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a relatively simple card wipe. In the first tutorial we'll set up the composition so that we've got say four along and three down of different images. And then after that we'll start looking at some of the parameters within card wipe, moving on to the camera system and the lighting systems and finishing off with things like position and rotation jitter. So to start off with what we're going to do is we're going to create a series of compositions that are going to fit inside here and give us the look that we're after. So I'm going to delete this solid and I'm going to create another composition. So go to my project panel you can either click here, you can do command or control N or composition, new composition, doesn't really matter. And this time I'm going to make sure that these are unlocked because I want these to fit perfectly inside this composition. So I'm going to make sure that they are unlocked and I'm going to take advantage of the math function that's inside After Effects. So where it says 1920, I'm going to click at the end so it's not highlighted and put divide by, so do a slash, divide by and we want 4 to go along. So divide by 4 and then height I want to click and it gives us a figure height I want to divide by 3 so divide by 3 it's going to give me a composition that's 480 by 360 now it's worth remembering that because we're going to use it a bit later on so I'm just going to write 480 by 360 but we can always come back to that a bit later on if you want to create a new preset of that size by the way you can just click this button and you can go and create a new preset I'm not going to bother just going to create the one but I'm going to call it picture one or pick one and click OK to create it. Now what I want to do is I want to create 12 of these to fill my main comp. So here's my main comp and I want four pictures along three rows. So I'm actually going to want 12 picture comps. So what I can do is I can click pick comp and I can just duplicate it up here but at the moment what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my first picture inside here before I start doing any duplication. So I'm going to bring in my pictures and I want them in a folder. So I'm going to create a folder, call it Pics. And I'm going to Control i Command i to import. And I'm going to navigate to my Pics. I've got this bunch of cloud pics that I think I got from Video Copilot. And go to the bottom so that they're all selected. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are Video Copilot ones. And click Open. And they're brought into my project panel. And what I want to do is bring picture one into the first picture comp. So take this picture one, TS-1, drag and drop and put it in there. Now it doesn't fit. If we want it to fit you can either right click and go to transform and then fit to comp or fit height, fit width, whichever you want. I can actually do fit to comp. It doesn't matter if these are slightly stretched or squashed. But notice there's a keyboard shortcut, Control alt f Command Option F on a Mac but that then makes it fit inside the composition. Okay, so pick one is inside comp one. So what I can do now is take pick one up here in my project panel and duplicate it. So command or control D to duplicate it. It's called pick two. And if we double click to open it, you'll see that pick two already has the same image in. And what we want to do is replace this image with image two. And to do that, what we can do is select this image and then also select image two or whichever image you want to replace it with. And then with them both selected, this is important, they both need to be selected, I can hold the Alt key, Option key on a Mac, 
drag and drop it on top of this one and when I let go it's going to replace the picture remembering all the settings that I've put onto it. So I'll do one more of those and then I'll pause the video to do the rest. So take pick 2 and command or control D to duplicate it. Open up where it says pick 3. Select the image in pick 3 and the one I want to replace it with. So I'm going to go for image 3. And then holding the alt key on the PC, the option key on the Mac, I'm going to drag and drop it on top. Let go and it replaces the image completely. So I'm going to go through and create 12 compositions. I'll just pause this recording and come back to you when it's done. So I've done all of those. I have a slight problem. I'll just show you in picture 11. It hasn't quite fitted properly. So you can either do Control alt f again or you can just make sure that the image is fitting properly. There you go. That will do for what we want to do for this particular composition. So I can shut down my pictures folder, but you've now got a whole bunch of compositions. I really ought to create a folder for those. So I'm going to create a folder and call them comps. And I'm going to take all my comps main to 12 and just drop them in the comps folder. And so I've now got a fairly organized settings. So I've got all my images actually in here and now I'm ready to add them into my main composition. In fact I can shut them all down here because I don't really need to see them all. So I'll just shut those. And so now I have my main comp which is completely empty. However, what I'd like to do is create a grid. So I'm going to create a new solid, so Command or Control Y to create a new solid. I'm going to call this one Grid, G-R-I-D. Doesn't matter what colour it is. And I'm going to go to my effects and presets again, and I'm going to just type in here Grid, G-R-I-D. And you'll see under Generate, we've got Generate category, we've got Grid, you can drag and drop the grid across. And there's the grid created. Obviously it's not what we want, it's not the right size, it's not the right width. You can click and move these around to try and get the right results if you want. So 3 by 4. So 3 by 4 and then sort of move it up here. Um, and that's kind of one way of doing it. The alternative is actually to go down here where it says corner point. You see size form where it says corner point. Go down to height and width sliders. And then what we can do is remember those settings that we had before. So the composition settings were 480 by 360. So I can click in here where it says width and say 480. And then I can go into height and do 360. And there we have the grid. It's not quite right. So I can actually just move this point here, this center point, and just move it so that it's just central. So we got the grid showing. I can't see my whole grid. It's going to do shift and forward slash just so I can zoom in properly. I can now see the whole of it and I can just move that up so that the grid is central. Okay, so I've typed in 960 by 360 which has given me the actual result I'm looking for. So the grid is actually in there. And what we can do now is we can actually change the size of the grid. At the moment the border is 5. We can actually make the border a little bit bigger if we like just to get the proper grid that we want to work from. And that gives us the grid spacing around which the items are going to work. I'm going to take that down just a tad. So what we can do now is we can bring in all those compositions. So I'm going to go back to the project panel, go to the comp panel. don't want main but I do want all the pictures. So select picture 1 to 12 and drag them below the grid drop them in. I'm actually going to lock the grid because I don't accidentally want to select it. And now I can take these pictures and I can start moving them around. So click away, pick one, take pick one to position one and just position each one of them in place one by one until you're happy with how they look. So again I'll position these and come back to you when that's done. So there you go, that's all the cloud pictures put into the composition. And now that those are all in place what we can do now is pre-compose them all inside our main composition. So we just select them all. You can do that by simply clicking on the numbers and dragging down. Now I'm not selecting one because it's still locked. So unlocking one, I could just click and drag to select them all. The other alternative is Control A, Command A to select them all. Either way will do it. And then you can either do Control Shift C to pre-compose or you can right click and pre-compose or layer pre-compose. Either will do. Um, so Control shift c or Command shift c That's what the way I'm going to do it. And then we get a dialog box which says, OK, what do you want to call this pre-composition? And we're going to call it our grid. OK. 
Now we can apply the card wipe effect to the grid. So what we can do is select grid and go and type in card wipe or look under the transitions effect. So I'm going to just do card and there's card wipe under transitions. Drop it on top of that single layer and then we can go in and change our rows and columns. So we have three rows, four columns, and now when we do our slider for percentage completion, we now have all of those turning over inside of our grid. Okay, so now we've done that, in the next tutorial we're going to start looking at some of these parameters and the fun that we can actually have with Cardwipe. My name's Andrew Davis and thanks for watching.